I'm Sebastian Davies, a learning experience expert at Dassault Systems. Hello, and welcome to this draft site for beginners video on using modification tools. In this multi-video series, we will develop an architectural drawing. In this video, we will use a range of modification tools to complete different tasks started in the previous video. These include rotating, mirroring, and matching properties to complete covered doors, using fillets and the offset command to complete a dressing table, patterning, copying, and editing text to add grid lines, and editing rich lines to complete the details on abutting walls. So, let's get started. In our previous video, we created different design content, including walls, a table, and a door. None of these are finished and need to be modified. We will start by zooming into the cupboard door. We want to indicate an angle of the swing, so we will click rotate, select a rectangle representing the door, and press enter to confirm. Next, we will indicate the base point around which we will rotate, then manually enter an angle of minus 45 degrees, and press enter to confirm. We want the properties of the arc and rectangle to match those of the cupboard. An easy way to do this is to use the property painter. This takes the properties from a selected entity and applies them to other entities. The property painter command is available from the menu drop down modify commands. First, we select the source entity, click on the arc and rectangle to apply these properties to them and press escape to end the command. The arc requires a different line style, so we will use the properties palette to change it. We do this by clicking on the arc and then selecting a dashed line style from the properties palette. With this done, we press escape to deselect the arc. This cupboard has two doors, so we need to add another. We can do this quickly using the mirror command to both copy and mirror the existing door to create another. We click mirror, do a crossing window selection to include the rectangle and arc, and press enter to confirm the selection. Next, we define the mirror line about which the entities will be copied by clicking the start and end of the mirror line. We then have the option to delete or keep the source entity. We want both, so type no and press enter to complete the cupboard doors. We will pan to the dressing table. It's a basic rectangle, so we will first add some fillets. We click on the fillets command, type R and press enter to change the radius of the fillets. We enter a value of 50 and press enter to confirm. The table entity is a polyline, so by typing P and pressing enter, we activate the polyline option, which applies fillets to all corners. We click on the rectangle and select polyline from the cycling selection. The image is a mask frame. This automatically adds fillets to all corners of the polyline and ends the command. We want to indicate a bevel edge on the table, but do not want to draw another rectangle and fillet it. We can use the offset command to create an offset copy. We will activate the command, enter a distance of 15 and press enter. We then select the filleted rectangle, moving our mouse outside the rectangle adds a larger copy and internally a smaller copy. We want an internal copy, so we click inside the table to create it and press escape to end the command. Beside the dressing table, we have walls that we used rich lines to create. We want to merge these, so we will use menu, modify entities and rich line. This provides us with a range of ways to edit the lines. We want to merge the T, so we select that option and click OK. Next, we select the internal wall and click on the external wall to merge the lines. We have another wall, so with the command still active, we pan to it and repeat the process. With this done, we can press escape to end the command and zoom out. We need to add more grids, so we will use the pattern command to add them horizontally and vertically. We select pattern and select the entities to be patterned. We change the vertical axis number to 1 as we only want horizontal copies in our pattern and then set the number of horizontal elements to 11. Next, we change the spacing to 9, 10 and click OK. This leaves us with one too many dimensions so we will click on it and press delete to remove it. We will repeat the pattern command and specify the entities we want to pattern using a crossing selection to include the vertical grid entities. As before, we change the settings, this time setting the horizontal axis to 1 and the vertical axis to 6 with a spacing of minus 910 and click OK. 
We made a mistake and should have specified seven elements rather than six, but we can easily fix the problem by just copying one. We window select the entities we want to copy and hold shift and click to deselect those we don't. We then click copy and specify the start point and distance between them, pressing escape to end the command. The text on the grids needs updating and we can do this in one of two ways. Select the text and change its value via the properties palette and press enter. We'll use a zoom window to get a closer look at the grid text. We can continue using the properties palette, however, for multiple edits it can be time consuming. The faster method is to double click on the text to activate the edit annotations command. With this command, we just type the new value and then click to select the following text notes to change them. With the command still active, we can pan to the other grids and continue to use the command to update the text. In our next video, we will look at how to print our drawings. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for even more great content and click the link in the description below to access additional tips, tricks and training courses.